Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie and today I'm going to be doing a Top 5 Wednesday video. Top 5 Wednesday is a group on Goodreads that provides all of these questions every Wednesday every month and if you're interested I will leave all of the information down below. This week's topic is characters that are on your naughty list and these can be anyone from villains to characters you just didn't like that much. For number 5 on my character naughty list I have Winter from the Lunar Chronicle series. I know this is Cress, I don't own Winter because I own the paperbacks of these books and Winter, even though it came out in like December of 2015, still is not out in paperback. Why? So I've been sitting with only the three books on my shelf. Anyway. Yeah, I didn't like Winter all that much. Out of all the characters that you get to follow in this series, for sure I think Cress is, or Cinder are probably my favorite. And I liked the fact that Winter was kind of this very different perspective. All the other characters in this book are very, you know, battle ready, you know, they're ready to do whatever they're good at, whether it's fighting, whether it's the hacking of the computers, whether it's, you know, coming up with the plan. And Winter just didn't seem to fit. She kind of just felt like a filler character in the sense that she is their reason and their ability to get into Luna or, you know, the complex or the uh, palace or whatever. She didn't really feel like part of the gang, in a sense. Like, you spend the first three books really getting to know these characters, and they really get to know each other, and their character dy dynamics together, not even just for, like, their significant others, are really interesting and really fun and really great. And then there was Winter, and I think his name's Jacob? I can't remember. Something with a J. And they just kind of felt separate from everyone. They didn't feel like part of the group. They didn't feel all that interesting. And her storyline, like, yeah, she was cute and she helped them out, but sometimes I found her kind of annoying. And I know that that's probably just because she's this very kind of... She was like Luna Lovegood, but in a bad way. Like, I love Luna Lovegood in her, like, kind of quirky and weird sense. And I feel like that was kind of what Winter was supposed to be but she just ended up being more annoying than anything else. The fourth character on my list I do not have the physical book for because I read it on ebook, and that is Percy Jackson from Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Percy just, I've read one other series from Rick Riordan. I read the Magnus Chase series just this last month, and I really liked Magnus Chase as a main character. I thought he was a very well-rounded character, had, you know, a good outlook on how he's supposed to be going about these things or whatever, and, like, being thrust into the hero position. And Percy Jackson, I just felt like he... Like, sure, he had kind of a shit beginning to things with his mom getting kidnapped and killed and all that kind of stuff, but he just kind of... Even before all that happened, he just kind of had a shit outlook on everything. He was just kind of like... He, like, even though he had a bad stepdad who treated his mom like crap and stuff like that. He just kind of had this shit outlook that I didn't like. And even when he finds out who his real dad is and kind of has a good reason as to why he wasn't around, because, I mean, I'm sure it's not a spoiler at this point, but everyone kind of knows he's a demigod. His dad is a Greek god. So it's like you think you'd understand why your dad, like, couldn't be around because he's a god, like, you know, he just kind of felt ungrateful throughout the entire book. Like, he has this incredible opportunity to be a demigod. Like, who wouldn't want the opportunity to be a demigod? And then he's just like, like, again, he's just supposed to be sarcastic and snarky, but it just came off to me as just kind of ungrateful and just, I didn't like him. He wasn't a snarky, sarcastic funny. He was snarky, sarcastic, like, you're kind of a shit. The third character on my list is Joan from Fierce Kingdom by Jen Phillips. The reason I don't like Joan here, I had issues with this book in general, but one of the main reasons I had an issue with Joan is she made some super stupid decisions. So, again, if you don't know anything about this book, this book is about a woman who gets trapped in a zoo with her son, when shooters come into the zoo and uh, she's trying to hide and protect her son and avoid, you know, interacting with these gunmen. Some of the things she does, like, she has her cell phone, right? So she can stay in contact with her husband to let them know that they're safe, to let him know so he can tell the police where they're at, like, located inside the zoo. And that's cool and all. And obviously, once it starts getting dark outside, she's worried about 
you know, the shooters being able to see the screen or to be able to hear the vibration or the ringtone or whatever on her phone. While this stuff is happening, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, turn your phone on silent, turn the brightness all the way down, and only access your phone, like, put it inside your purse, like, you know, so it can't be seen or whatever. Like, there are ways to go about this where people can't see you when you're doing this, like go into a corner where you're hiding and put your back around it and no one's going to be able to see the light, especially if the brightness is on low. Like, I was solving this in my head. But her solution to this is to throw the phone away. Like, she legit chucks the phone over the fence and just is like, bye. Lose all contact with the outside world of people who can help you, to people who can tell you where to go, to people who can help find you, and so you can provide helpful information to the police so they know how many gunmen are actually in the zoo. But instead, she throws the phone away. The minute she did that, I was just like, I, I can't get on board with you. You're a fucking idiot. Like, you, what are you doing? So, yeah, I had a problem with her when she did that. And then she just continued to make really, really dumb and stupid decisions. So, Joan. Not the brightest crayon in the box. Don't read this. <laughs> and the last two characters on my list are for sure characters that you just like love to hate. The author does a really good job of like, yes, they are like the villain of the story, but they are so cruel and so disgusting and just such horrible people that you just, you, ugh, you just love to hate them because they just get under your skin so thoroughly. So my second choice is Hilly Holbrook from The Help by Katherine Stockett. If you don't know much about The Help, this is takes place before the Civil Rights Movement, like kind of right before the Civil Rights Movement in like the 1950s, I think, something like that. And it's about a girl who is trying to write a book about what it's like to be a black maid in Jackson, Mississippi in like the 1950s. So it's called The Help, which is referring to the women who work in these, you know, very well-to-do white family homes. And the kind of villain of the story is Hilly Holbrook, who is very much like, you know, a pillar of society. She is the debutante. She is the wife to a very well-to-do, well you know, man in Jackson, Mississippi. And she is very much in the view that black people are lower in society and should be treated as such. So she is trying to get things passed in her town to force the black help in the household to use a different restroom and to keep things segregated. And it's just overall, you know, she's disgusting. Some of the things she says and the things she does is just so against what we all believe now or what most of us believe now. I'm not going to get into that, but... So whenever anything bad happens to her, whenever any of the maids get a slick remark into her, or there's a few things that happen in this book that the maid does to get back at Hilly, who was her boss, and oh, it is just, it's so satisfying when the characters are able to get back at her. And to prove her wrong and to show her that, you know, your views are old and horrible and disgusting and that everyone is equal. And so she's just a character that you love to hate and you love to see her views and her ideals get shut down. And to see her react to that is so satisfying. And uh, if you haven't read this book, I do highly recommend this book. It can be hard to read at times because it is about mistreatment of people, but I think especially nowadays it is really important to see where we all started, how we got to where we are, and you know we can always learn and to do better in the future when we understand what has happened in the past. So I highly recommend this book. And the last character on this list I'm sure is going to be on many people's list, and if it's not on your list then you'll probably think, oh shit, I should probably put that on my list. And it's Joffrey Baratheon from the Game of Thrones series. Joffrey, like, I never thought I could hate a child so much. Like, in the show, the actor who plays Joffrey, like, seems older. He looks like he's, you know, 16, 17, 18. Instead of in the book, he's actually supposed to be, like, 12. I think he starts off at, like, eight or nine, too. So he starts off really young. So I didn't think I could hate a child so 
thoroughly. He just is the quintessential spoiled brat, but a spoiled brat in a world where, you know, chopping somebody's head off is just like second nature to most people. So he's just cruel and disgusting in the way he treats everyone around him, not even just like the people he knows that are lower to him, but the shit that he says to like Tyrion and his mother. And I was just like, God, if I was Cersei, I would fucking bitch slap that boy back to the womb. Like he is horrible and disgusting and she allows it to happen and it just uh it just gets under your skin and just drives you crazy so to know that so many characters in this book are fighting to keep such a horrible person in power and to keep him on the iron throne is just like god it makes your skin crawl and it really makes you empathize with other character point of views in the book and just adds a really great dynamic to the rest of the series and keeps it in a sense that you're, you know, you're not rooting for the people who are in the best political seat and are in the best position in order to keep their power and to extend their power. And, I mean, this series is just really good in general. Like, if you at all enjoy the show, I highly recommend reading the book. It is, there's a lot more, obviously, in the books. It does differentiate, I think, starting in the third one. And I just, I really, really love this series and I can't wait to continue on. So that's all that I have for this Top 5 Wednesday video. The next week's topic I don't think I'm going to be doing because it's supposed to be like your Top 5 of 2017 and I'm planning on doing a whole other video dedicated to that starting in January. So I'm probably going to skip next week's, but I'll be back for the last week of December. If you enjoyed this Top 5 Wednesday video, please let me know. And if you have done your own Top 5 Wednesday videos, please leave them linked down below and I would love to watch them. So until next time, happy reading and I'll see y'all then. Bye.